As a reminder of the sort of taxonomy of conditions that exist somewhere on the system that require the processor's attention, we had interrupts from hardware and instructions and exceptions, which were the fault, which the RIP points at the faulting instruction, and the trap where the RIP points at the instruction after the trapping instruction. So let's talk about what happens when a hardware breakpoint fires. It actually fires the IDT entry one, which the manual calls a debug exception. So you can see that one, this is from hardware and two, it's called an exception. So this notion of hardware interrupts versus exceptions are not mutually exclusive. And so what happens is that whenever it's an execute breakpoint or a general detect breakpoint, meaning there was that GD bit, which is when someone does a move instruction trying to write to the debug registers, it is going to be treated as a fault. So in that case, basically break on execute or general detect, it's a fault, halt, Hitler's fault, pointing at Bobo saying, this is all your fault, RIP points at the faulting instruction. Then also on break on write, break on read write, and break on IO, hardware breakpoints, it's a trap. So basically there's two different types of behavior that the debugger has to account for. So practically speaking, that means if it is a break on write or a break on you know, read write, the data is actually going to be overwritten before the exception is generated. So any sort of debug handler that would want to actually determine what the before and after values were would actually have to read the value at the time of the initial breakpoint setup. On the other hand, an instruction breakpoint is actually detected before the instruction executes. Now this is different from the software breakpoint we saw before. We said the software breakpoint from before was actually a trap. And so basically, previously it would trap after the hex CC, the int three assembly instruction, but it always knew it could back up by a single, a single byte in order to get back to what the original instruction would be in order to overwrite the original instruction. Now in this case with the hardware breakpoint, because it's actually breaking before the instruction occurs, you know, a debugger that would want to, you know, step over the instruction or something like that, it would have to go figure out, you know, it would have to essentially disassemble the assembly instruction. So that is sort of undesirable. So practically speaking, what's going to occur is that the debugger is going to use the resume flag. So in order to resume execution without refiring the hardware breakpoint, just continuously hitting the same assembly instruction, it will use resume flag. So resume flag was another one of these special system flags in the R, e, R flags or E flags register, bit 16. So the behavior of the resume flag is that the processor ignores instruction breakpoints for the duration of the next instruction. The processor then automatically clears this flag after the instruction return to has become has been successfully executed. So if you break on execute with a hardware breakpoint and then the RIP is pointing at the assembly instruction that's going to execute but which has not yet executed, the debugger must set the resume flag and then it can resume and then the resume flag will make it so that it doesn't just re-break on the exact same assembly instruction. In order to actually set the resume flag, the debugger has to manipulate the stored R flags that's on the stack as a result of the interrupt. And then the IRETQ, the return interrupt return, is going to actually set the R flags because we talked at the very, very beginning, if you recall way back for CPU ID, we said CPU ID needs to be able to set and clear the or the process software needs to be able to set and clear the ID flag in the R flags register in order to confirm that CPU ID is actually usable. We talked about push FQ and pop FQ, and those were the quad word forms pushing and popping the R flags register. But it turns out that actually the RF flag is not valid to be set by the pop FQ. It can only be set by this IRET Q. So if you look in the manual for pop F, uh, you'll see this table, which essentially says the resume flag is never ever set on any sort of conditions here having to do with the pop F. And these other ones, yes, they can potentially be set, but resume flag is not. 